talk more about this summit today. I'm joined in the studio by our foreign affairs editor, Philip Turl. And Philip, first of all, um, what kind of announcement do you think we should expect later on today from the EU on this issue of Ukraine? This is all quite tricky for the European Union yeah. because what they need to do is, first of all, put pressure on Russia because nobody really wants Russia to... Uh, invade Ukraine and to try to take control of the country. That is the, the, the name of the game here, is to de-escalate this situation. Uh, Russia has massed these forces along the border, uh, reports of 170,000 troops there now. This number's been going up gradually over the past few days. Uh, what is holding Russia back, if anything is holding it back at the moment, is the fact that we're in the middle of the winter. So actually getting over the border into Ukraine is more complicated in, in very uh, difficult winter conditions. If he's to wait until the early spring, either when uh, the, the the winter is, is on the way out and things start to thaw, it would be easier, or it would even be easier if it was all frozen over and the troops could just move in over the ice. But that doesn't do away with the fact that nobody really knows what's going on in, in President Putin's mind and whether or not he is determined to invade or not. So that the reason for the meeting today is principally to discuss that. And what the EU needs to do and what it is trying to do is to build up uh, a, 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 a form of uh, force opposite Russia to show it that it means business. It is united in its opposition to what Russia is uh, thinking maybe about doing. The problem for the EU is showing unity within itself over its ability to counterbalance what Russia is trying to do, i.e. to argue with the European Union, to argue with NATO, that it should not increase its ties with Ukraine. Ukraine is the backyard of Russia, and Russia doesn't want any closer ties with the West. It certainly doesn't want NATO installing bases there. Uh, it wants Ukraine as its own area, if you like. And that's what this is all about. So... The EU needs to remain united, but the EU is not that united about this, particularly over what sanctions it can take, what measures it can take, uh, over whether or not to continue with the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. Poland says it was a complete error to do that. Germany wants that pipeline to come into effect. So there's already a disagreement between members of the European Union over that. Uh, you have to remember also these are not just sanctions that are in place already, uh, which have been in place since 2014, and uh, the takeover uh, of uh, other parts of Ukraine by uh, uh, by uh, Russia. Uh, there are also sanctions from the United States. But I think what Russia is trying to do is to show the EU as the bad group, the bad group that doesn't want to negotiate with Russia, and therefore it's thinking about imposing new sanctions. So what we have here is uh, a, a, a group one group opposite another group trying to show force to each other. And hopefully that is what the EU is hoping will try to diffuse the situation. Well, you talk about the need for unity on this issue among member states. Now, when it comes to another big issue that they're talking about today, and that's this Omicron COVID variant that's spreading very fast indeed, do you think that there'll be a kind of united EU message on that today? I think there is a united EU message on that. The united EU message is that people must get their booster jab as quickly as possible. If they've already received two jabs or one jab if they just got over COVID, the most important thing is to get out there and get those booster jabs. Because if uh, people who don't get uh, uh, the third jab get hold of get, get a COVID uh, and the, the Omicron variant, then they could be seriously ill because the vaccine doesn't offer the same protection as it does against the Delta variant. That's the first message coming out. But there is some discrepancy and some annoyance within uh, the uh, authorities in Brussels over the way some countries in the EU are dealing with this, notably Ireland, Portugal, Greece and today Italy, which are imposing uh, their own tests on residents coming into their country, uh, particularly Italy, has annoyed uh, Brussels because it's now asking for a PCR test for all EU citizens who go in there who are even fully vaccinated. And the uh, aim of the European Union was to create a free travel zone within the Schengen area for all fully vaccinated EU nationals, so they wouldn't have to do that. So now they're trying to come together to find out, to work out some kind of solution amongst all 27 EU member states so that this kind of situation where some will require a PCR test, others won't require a PCR test, some will require an antigenic test, uh, doesn't confuse travellers. But it's true that the arrival of the Omicron variant has caused a lot of trouble and a lot of confusion in Brussels about what the right 
par to take is. And at, at the same time, there are these warnings from the World Health Organization that uh, uh, we really are in a, a race against time to get these vaccines out because uh, Omicron really does pose a very serious threat and could cause enormous amount of damage if people don't get vaccinated. Philip Tell, thank you very much.